have this special teaching that is for your born again children, children of the Most High, who are but living now here as Christ tarries. We pray that our spirits will be humbled and that we'll receive and above all, do according to your word this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Shall we be seated, please? Good morning and welcome once again in the house of the Lord. For me, it's always a very, very humbling experience to stand before you in order to uh, attempt so to share together the things the Lord has been placing on our hearts as his dear children in this life for now and most of all in our congregation. The, la the Lord has li uh, saved us and has given us a specific way of life. And so for today, I'll be talking about life and living the sanctified life. Because we need to operate as Christ's ambassadors in this life for now. So I will read from the epistle of Paul to the Roman church. The, 14, the first 14 verses of the 8th chapter. Romans chapter 8 verse 1 to 14. I'll say that my job for this month is very easy. Because you're already Holy Spirit filled and you're already living the life. And therefore it's just to bring up some few things. Uh, so that we'll be pricked. Or be reminded to get back on track if we are deviating in any form. I read from the New King James Version of the Bible. There is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his son, his own son, in the likeness of sinful flesh, on their account of sin. He condemned sin in his flesh, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to the carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God. Nor indeed can be. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if, you, if, but if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you would live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are his son. These are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are God's children. And if children then, heirs and heirs of God and join heirs with Christ if indeed we suffer with him that we may also 
be glorified together. Amen. I read over 14 because <laughs> let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word this morning, which is very explicit and clear. You are calling us to a life in the spirit. And so as we go through these verses of scripture, may our spirits be once again quickened that will denounce the flesh that is always locking itself, tempting us to sin, but that we will give ourselves ever more fully to the leadership of your spirit. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. In uh, the first letter of Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1, the apostle Paul, writing to the Corinthian church, said, Regarding these things, I wish that you not be ignorant concerning these things. Concerning which things? Concerning spiritual things. I, I, I thought about this verse because the most confused people in this life concerning the things of the spirit are God's children, spiritual people. And Paul was also writing to a spiritual people at Corinth who were not spiritual, who were fleshy, who were carnal. So he wrote to them, reminding them that they are spiritual people. And for me too, humbly I stand before you this morning to remind you that you are spiritual people. Amen? Amen. And therefore the life you've been called to is a spiritual life. Let us not get confused about the antics of this life for now. Because people think that when you make noise and throw up your hands and speak funny language, that must be spirit. It is not always true. That can be spirit, but it is not always true. We are called to a life, a very simple, straightforward life. To live a life that has been sanctified by the blood of Jesus Christ. A very easy life to live if we would only yield to the leading of the spirit. Say life in the spirit. So I stand before you today to conclude what you have learned over the course of the month and also during the Holy Communion. That life in the spirit is the life that is real life. Life in the spirit, you know, we have body, soul, and spirit, right? And so we are, we are spirit. Giving the soul and living in this cartoon called the body. We spend a lot of money taking care of this cartoon that is going to last for just how many years? For some, 15 years. For some, they are born stale. For some, 80 years. For some, 120. For some, 70. I have been looking at uh, stories this time, drugs and supplements and vitamins that will make you live long. <laughs> I tell you that at some point, you hate yourself for staying alive too long. My granddad died when he was 92 and still very strong. But his biggest dilemma was that all his mates had died. And even the one following him we are just remaining a few. So he lacked company. That was his first problem. So life in the spirit. If you want to live life that is real life. It is this life in the spirit. A life that you're, you are directly connected to God. We were told in the communion that God is spirit, right? And that everybody who wishes to worship him must worship him on his terms. And therefore he demands that we worship him in spirit and what? In truth. We will not go back to that one. But I just want to mention before you that the real life is the life lived in the spirit of God. Secondly, the life in the spirit is the life of faith. It's a life of trusting God. It's a life that places all that belongs to you and all that you are completely in the hands of God. Life in the spirit is life that I and you have been called to. It's the life of God's children. The children of the world live in the flesh. 
the children of God live where? In the spirit. So you have been called. And we have been reminded just to live our life. Life in the spirit. And it's a life that is empowered. Jesus himself said that as many as received him, he will give power to live his life. And so be not ignorant concerning these spiritual issues. But be humbled and seek the face of the Lord and ask him, Father, lead me. Life in the spirit is a life that overcomes. It's a life that is sweet life, real life. And if you get hold of life in the spirit, that's when you're living. Because where we have read, the Bible tells us that if you are living in the flesh and you're still alive in this life, you are a living corpse. You are dead. <laughs> it's one of our musicians that sang Zombiva. You are a spiritual zombie. You lack power. You are driven about. You are pushed. You are drawn back against your wish. But because you lack power to live the life that you've been called to, you just follow on. I wish to beg of you and remind you and exhort you that never allow yourself to be pushed around by the flesh or anybody that is living in the flesh. Amen? Even if he is in our church, even if he belongs to any spiritual church anywhere, if he is a prophet, if he is a man of God, if he is a pastor, if he is a bishop, live a life that is being led by the Spirit of God. Amen? Life in the Spirit is a life that depends solely on the leadership of the Spirit of God. Jesus said that when the Holy Spirit comes, he will lead you into all truth. John 16, 13. Are you following a leadership that is leading you into truth? John encouraged us to test all spirits. And the first thing that you can begin to know of the spirit is that that spirit leading you is telling you the truth. And the truth is Jesus Christ revealed in scripture. I am the life and I'm truth and I am the way. So you have been called to follow the leadership of the spirit of God. That's the benefit that you and I have. I don't have to grapple in the dark, in the dark seeking where to go because the Holy Spirit is there for me to grab. And then he will lead me into truth. Not just truth about spiritual or church things. Truth about every issue of life, of your life. If you want a job, if you are working on a job, if you are going to the market. How many of you women rely on the spirit of God to lead you as you go shopping? How many of you students, as you go down to read mathematics or geography, you ask for leadership of the Spirit as you read your, do your studies, that Father teach me that I will know the secret behind this particular thing. And I tell you students in the house, he will lead you and you will know it. He will give you strength. He will give you ability to read and comprehend what you're reading. And particularly for the students, for our kids who are in school, and even for the grown-ups too. I was reading a, a, a clip this morning and saying that the high echelon in civil service will now have to do exam and even pay for it in order to be promoted. Is, it? Is that right? So it's also for you too. This promotion exam, Father, teach me. Do you know that he can do expo for you? <laughs> he, 
He will lead you to know beyond your level. Because you are his child. And he doesn't want you to fail in the promotion exam and look stupid and get, you know, redundant for a while. Ask him to lead you. As you prepare in the house, you the madam, so that you do not put excess salt. Cause that my husband will be so hungry for this thing I'm preparing. And that he will so love it because it's delicious and he would always want to rush back home right on time. As those Maggi people, they do advertisement. Other, otherwise, you have your husband always coming home to complain that, ah, my belly is worrying me. I'll take something small and my stomach will be filled. Maybe she ate something somewhere because he is afraid to tell you that you have to step up your cooking a little bit. And so he's looking for good lies to tell you. Create that appetite in him. And he does it. You know, men love you women. You, their wife, they love you. I asked another man, do you pray for the hands that prepare the food when you go to eat in a restaurant? He said, no. But I've often heard Christian people pray over the food their wives bring for them. Bless this meal and the hands that prepared it. Don't you listen? Hey, mommy. <laughs> Ask him for everything. You gave me my wife. Teach me to love her. Abi. Because I have worked long enough with Christian people who, who make us cry. And sometimes it would be the wife of their youth. Whom Malachi wants us against. And uh, to my disappointment, sometimes it's the woman that is making the man grow gray beard. But if we ask him, even these ones that we think we can handle by ourselves, he will teach us. Amen? Amen. Never worry your life and attempt to do life as a Christian by yourself. Ask him for leadership. Let me not go off key today. Because when he goes off key, he tells them he will start again. He do some free, 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 and uh, the choir will know that the key he raised was too high. <laughs> little, little things we think this once we can handle ourselves. We will be at our best if we ask him to lead us. I'll, I'll encourage you to take the lead from the footballers. You see them, but this time they're coming in for substitution. They do, at least they do sign of the cross. <laughs> so anybody who does the sign of the cross will take it for a Christian. My problem is that some use the left hand because those who brought this thing, they use the right hand. Some they do touch the top hand. Use the left hand. <laughs> so I ask you to please seek him. He will lead you. That's why the spirit came in the first place. So you've been called to live this life. If you're not living under his leadership, you'll be living in the flesh. And the Bible tells us that a life lived in the flesh leads to what? Death leads to death. That's why I said life that is real life is a life lived under the leadership of the Spirit of God. Secondly, you will know what's truly yours and you will know your Lord deeper. Because we are called to a knowledge of him who saved us. Our faith is based on knowledge. We have not been called to a blunt faith that keeps us groping in the dark. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 
Verse 10 following. The Bible tells us that. It's the spirit who knows all things. And the spirit of God lives in you. And therefore he will lead you and tell you everything the Lord has for you. And all you need to know about God. Do you know that you can't know anything about God, or even if you read in scripture, unless the, the Lord reveals his secrets to you. And so you need to know him more and more on a daily basis if you live in the spirit. The apostle Paul writing to the Corinthian church says, you have to depend completely on the spirit of the living God. He will teach you and he will lead you to know what is truly yours that you will not go coveting other people's stuff. Amen? The Bible says, verse 10, 2 Corinthians, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit for the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. That's the love of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit of who is from God. That we might know the things that he, we have been freely given by God. I think it was Prophet Jeremiah that says that God has good plans for us and plans to prosper us and to give us every good gift in this life. And so if you are living the spirit-filled life, God himself will reveal, the spirit of God will reveal what is truly yours and you will enjoy life in this life. I bet you other people are pursuing even professions that they were not specifically designed to pursue. So if you are living the spirit life, the spirit of God himself will reveal God further, will reveal the knowledge of God to you further, and will teach you even the things that you are craving to know. He will teach you what is truly yours, and you will live and enjoy your life. Thirdly, you have freedom. Freedom, I told you that we are talking about life and living the sanctified life. You are free to live. 2 Corinthians 3.17 says that where the spirit of God is, what for, there is freedom. Not freedom to live anyhow, but freedom to live and to enjoy life. Do you know that even in church, I have lived with our people at home. I was pastor in the village. Uh, it used to be sweet. Pastor in the village. Oga, pastor in the village is everything. If anybody is sick, he will come see the pastor. Not specifically for prayers yet, though, because he's Otis that knows everything. If you have a legal issue, the first person you go to is Otis. Every issue. Marital issue. Every issue, he, they come. Here, I hear some people, they, they, they go for communion. Now it's communion month. Yesterday, just in the night, I had received calls in the church office here. When I went home, I was still receiving calls because some of our members will go to Benue. Some for a whole year. They will be sitting uh, as a uh, guests and you know in our context you are required to sit in your local church before you go as a guest elsewhere the only reason behind is that they would want you to be accountable to leadership at every given point that keeps you in check in order to live the sanctified life it's nothing else it's just to make sure that you're living right and so they will call me you know at home if you are that traveling to go to where their sister is married, they will come and tell Otese, 
Perchance Otis don't see them and is asking after them. I need to tell him. Eh? But here, they will go to Benue for six months. And say, I'm the one calling. I'm from uh, Galadimawa. I've been at home to bury my mother <laughs> or find some other convincing reason. I was telling the other person the other day that why is it that everybody's mother is dying? <laughs> you know, because they whip up your emotions, ba, and so you look favorably. Because the pastor at home is just looking for a, a word from her. And I asked, when did you go home? They say, I've been home for six months. The other one told me that I've been transferred to Benue, but I want my transfer certificate to be in Abuja. I say, why? Because the transfer is just like Benue uh, links ticket. If you are going to Benue, they give you a ticket. But, and the moment you arrive, Makudi, that ticket is finished. You have to buy another one to proceed to Boko or Twenty London or wherever you want to proceed. So also is the transfer certificate. The law states that if you are going away from Abuja for at least three months, you have to take along your certificate. If you go there and discover that, oh, I had been transferred back, you just go to pastor, bring back my transfer. He gives back to you and you take to Abuja. Is that difficult for us to do? But I am bringing up these practical issues because you differentiate before, between people who are living in the spirit in our church and people who are playing games with their lives and spiritual lives. Just yesterday, by now they will be preparing for Holy Communion at home. But what happens at home now is that you have to come for service, listen to the word, go back home and eat pounded yam, and come back for communion at 2 o'clock. <laughs> so these are the small, small things that people are living and are being popped up. I run counseling service in order to prayerfully seek to know where God has saved you and called you to worship him. Because if you are in a church that your spirit is not resident, you will not enjoy your spiritual life and you will not live well. For instance, if you are in KST just because your mother at home will have more BP if you leave, I am begging of you today to reconsider your stand. Because this spirit life is a life to be lived and enjoyed. So if I come across anybody who dislikes anything about snoddy, think seriously about your life. Maybe this is not where you were saved and placed to worship for the rest of your life in this life. Because if you are where you are truly being placed, you will be happy to serve. I was telling somebody the other day that uh, my uncle was working in Kassina Allah. He is a Catholic. He was the divisional veterinary officer of the then Kassina Allah local government that comprised Logo and all of that. He was a big man in his own right in the Ministry of uh, Agriculture. And when I went to see him in the evening one day, and he was not there, they told me he was in church at St. Gerard. When I went there to visit him, he was cutting grass at the back of the father's residence that they came to clean up the air. How many of us, rather than raiding abuses on Senodi and NKST Abuja when the, when the compound is littered, would seek that it's clean? How many of us, if a brother or a sister falls, would be quick to come alongside and pray and encourage them. This is spiritual life. But those who are living in the flesh will turn the prayer topic of that sister, that brother into a gossip. Issue for gossip. 
you have been called to enjoy life. So if you live life in the spirit, you will truly enjoy life. Because that is what you've been called to. Jesus said, if you know who I am and come to me, I'll set you free to enjoy life. You will live a victorious life on a daily basis. When we were kids, they would pray in church that when we come to church, we hear the word, we sing, and we, we are happy. But the devil is always by the door. How many of us can relate to this kind of old foolish prayer in church? And sometimes there will be closing prayer, so that the devil is standing at the door. And he will snatch this wonderful word we have heard in church. It is very unfortunate and something to cry over. But for 30 minutes you've been here, you heard something sweet. And just by the door, somebody snatches that thing from you. This is spiritual Down syndrome. You are a war person now. From the pew to the door, and somebody snatches it from you. But of course, yes, if you are living this Christian life in the flesh, he will snatch you. In fact, he will not allow you to live. When they are sending the message to convict you, you'll be busy looking for people to pass it on to. Forward the message. That is, they say forward him, but when they send message to you, you forward somebody. So you say that, hey, that thing appears like Madame Sososo's behavior. I went to one village to preach and I say, somebody came over, over to me and I, ah, pastor, the spirit is working now. You are not here with us and you were just telling us the things that. <laughs> Rather than humbling yourself and asking and weeping and crying that, Father, help me. I know this is how you designed for me to live in scripture. But alas, this is what I find myself doing all the same. Please help me. And trust me, according to scripture, he would help you. This was Paul's experience in the seventh chapter of Romans uh, epistle. The things I do are the things I don't want to do. And in verse 24, he cries out and says, who will help me in this flesh? Praise be unto God in verse 25 by Christ Jesus. So a life lived in the spirit by, is a victorious life. Titus chapter 2 and verse 12. The Bible tells us that he has given us his spirit that we will live victoriously. Are you living a victorious life? Or when you come to church and hear this good stuff, somebody snatches by the door and they will call him the devil. Today, the devil will not snatch anything from us. From now onward, he will never snatch. But that is only for those who are truly seeking after him and who are living by the Spirit. Otherwise, he would always snatch. We have just come out of our communion conference. Some people would not come until Saturday, 2 o'clock. You think those people are growing? With every sense of humility, I'll tell you, they are not. And they are not even living in the spirit. They are just living to fulfill man-made administrative rules so that the elders do not ask me where I was during the ago. Adi? <laughs> Why is it that the two o'clock service at the conference, the church will be full with overflow? Thank God. You know, overflow is a thing of pride and a thing of, to brag about. Say, so this one is overflow, tent number one. Tent number two, overflow. Thank God, me, ma, I'm holding services that we have overflow in the uncompleted building, in the tent outside. But is that the issue? 
why have you stopped to ask yourself, why is it that the two o'clock period is always full? These are, these are fleshy people. I am sorry, but we have to repent. People come for Friday, come for Saturday, and you will sit at the front, but when you come on Saturday, 2 o'clock, you'll be looking for children's chair. I tell, you, tell them to stop using your children's chairs for the big people. You know, the chair, the small chair is, you know, it has a small, uh -huh. not for big people. The big people, their behind is bigger than that chair. I was I decent in my ability to communicate? <laughs> there is one just outside there now. They look for where to sit, those who have been consistent in the program. So I'm just trying to put before you the things we see and do every day so that we, at the end of the service, we'll differentiate between the flesh and the spirit and of course, by the grace of God, we will choose to go by the Spirit. Amen? Amen. You will live victorious life every second, every minute, if you choose to. There was a program on BBC, The Choice is Yours. You can choose. The Lord is so, so respectful to us, so to speak, that he gives us the choice to choose, even to follow him, to serve him. And even to come under the leadership of the spirit, the spirit life, he has also given us the choice to choose. And you can make the choice to live right. We have beautiful underwears, for instance. I was telling the other people the other day, there is this short knickers that men wear in order to put up the trouser bar. They call it uh, a boxer. Even women know the boxer. No matter how immaculate your inner vest is, you don't wear just the inner vest to church, Abby. That is choice. You can choose to do that. But the only thing is I will tell you to rig it some more. So you choose to come in this fine-looking uniform. That's choice. Another day you will choose to come in white shirt and black trousers, Abby. And you will drive people who don't have white shirts. <laughs> That's choice. That's, you can choose to live this life for... Oh. Let nobody fool you that it's difficult to live the Christian life. The easiest life you can live is the Christian life. Philippians tells us it's he who causes us to desire and gives us the ability to live. But the devil will just give you some stupid idea and you will go worrying and worrying yourself. If you just live the Christian life, the spirit life, it is fulfilling. It's a victorious Christian life by the day. You can choose. Verse 11 says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that, denying God ungodliness and worldly loss, that's the flesh, we should be soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. The Spirit of God is here with us to teach us to say no to every ungodliness if you choose to. He is here. Are we helping ourselves? Let nobody fool you. You can't make the choice to follow Jesus Christ because every decision in life for every second Two options, at least two options are there. Option in the flesh, option in the spirit. And the choice is yours. I encourage you this morning, I exhort you, I pray for you, that at every crisis point, you will choose to go in the spirit. Amen?
you can choose. You, can, you have been blessed. You have been so honored that you make the choice. And if you just would discipline yourself and take the first right step in the spirit, you have the courage, you have the experience to take the second step and it becomes your way of life to live a victorious life. You can. And lastly, you will bear fruit if you live the spirit life. People can see that truly you are spiritual. You will not need to remind people that you are born again. But they will see born again in your life. Amen? Because that's why you were born again and given the spirit in the first place. I chose you. And release you. To do what? To bear much fruit. Fruit that will last. But you see, the devil is very crafty. Now we have abandoned the fruit-bearing business. We are more given to gifts. And even the gifts of the Spirit are those ones that are not so edifying. Because God's primary purpose is the body, the church. Not the individual, first of all, but the church. So bear fruit. John the Baptist in Matthew 3, 8 back, told them that now that you have repented, go and bear fruit in accordance to your repentance. The spirit-led life is fruit-bearing so that other people will see your good deeds, right? And come worship your father with you. How is it that in this life we are living now, we have spirit-filled churches. We have churches who have been given names in the heavenly language. Not common English now, no. You, have you seen churches that they, are, they bear names that have been given in tongues? Tongue-speaking church. A church that believes that every sanctified son of God ready for heaven is who is showing the sign that he is born again by speaking in tongues. That's why I open by telling you that concerning these issues, don't be ignorant. Because that sounds very spiritual. Abby? It sounds so good and spiritual. And keeps you high above those who are not like you. But I tell you, that one is not here. And anything that does not align with the revealed word of God is not spiritual, no matter how good and how high-sounding it might be. Whether it's from an archbishop, whether it's from prophet, or from man of God. Because pastor is too small to talk this kind of heresy. <laughs> My job is done. It's for you to go now and live and bear fruit. And fruit you can bear because the spirit life is a life that is connected to the vine that nourishes the branch that produces the fruit. You can't live this life. And it's a life that I encourage each and every member of not just the English language congregation, but all of us that we will follow and begin to bear fruit in line with the Christ that we profess. This is a call to responsibility in the confession of our faith. Tomorrow will be Bible study. And when you come to study God's word, according to his command, you know, the coming together of the brethren is very key to God's heart. The social aspect, the... Rob body, according to Sarah Lunians, they say we rob body. They're coming together to fellowship. That social aspect, God is interested in that as well. Not just the many verses that we know. The real fruit bearing is coming together to encourage each other as we see them. Because the spirit-led life 
will lead you and show you a brother that is in need, for instance. The moment your eyes set on him, the spirit will minister to you. Give him 500 naira. And maybe that 500 naira will be for Keke to go to Dakibu. And he will say, thank God. I gave my last 500 naira to come for Bible study. And the Lord has proven himself again. I encourage you to be here tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Or you would discourage me to know that I am standing before a congregation that is operating in the flesh. Spirit is there. You are born again. But the life you are living is a carnal life. Concerning these things, I wish that you would not be ignorant. The choir is always begging us to come. I wish that on that day that the National NKST Choir comes here. Maybe I will not say all of you. Maybe most of us will be wearing a show. Do you call this one a show be also? <laughs> eh? Choir I should be. <laughs> or is that cloth that you go for party that is a show be? This one is what? Uniform. <laughs> I wish that you will all be here and that as we stand to sing a song of welcome to all the choirs in NKST, this platform will be too small to take Abuja NKST Abuja choir. Amen? Amen. And I'll be somewhere there sitting and listening to your sweet voices and be dreaming of that heavenly choir that will get there one day. Please try singing here because there you, <laughs> you do be singing songs. According to Revelation 5.12, holy, holy, holy around the throne. So if you have a hoarse voice, <laughs> it's time for you to loosen your cord now. So that when you get there, they will say, ah, who is that? I can hear that note, high note. Oh, I will say, he was my member here. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We can live the life. Stop worrying your life. If you're not living the life, today is an opportunity, ba, that you will come. Don't think that God will harm you. Or it's a tax master with a big whip to slash you each time you go wrong. But know that the Spirit of God is not happy, is grieved each time you take a step that is not in the spirit. If you keep taking those steps and grieving him, the voice will start getting smaller, 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 smaller until you will not hear the voice any longer. That's when Paul said to Timothy in 1 Timothy 4.2, his conscience will be snare and you will be living life in the flesh with your big bible now it's even unfashionable to carry bible myself in your app because when we were growing up there, there were different sizes the small one for small small brethren who go for evangelism they put it in the pocket at least New Testament and Psalms and Proverbs. And other people will be laughing at them and telling them that it's because you are living a double life that you are carrying a small Bible that you hide it in your pocket. Others will be carrying medium size. And I remember vividly the ones that the uncles used to carry. Very big one with uh, markers everywhere inside. Today, in this conclusion, the Lord is calling us that all of that is for my edification. Now, it's for me to go and live what the Lord has been revealing to me in his word. And you can live that life. Let nobody, super brother or super sect, put you on the spot. Just live the sanctified life. And the grace of God will be sufficient for you to give you power 
and strength to live that life that you've been called to. May the Lord bless you. Let us pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for today that your spirit is here to lead us. Help us that we'll identify the works of the flesh and give us power that we'll choose the ways of the spirit that we might live and be live in peace. Thank you for forgiving us where we have lived in the flesh. We plead for grace that from now on we live a life of the spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.